Tennessee, man. Smoke them if you got them. Third Saturday in October, another dub for the folks out there in Knoxville. 24 to 17 was the final as cigar smoke, you have to believe, was just filling up. Not just Neyland, but all of Knoxville and more power to them. What can we take away from this game? If you're a Tennessee fan, if you're just college football sicko in general, what did we learn last night about Tennessee? Make sure you're dialed in here. Make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate you in advance for that. We're going to give you our thoughts on Tennessee from this game. Now, if you're listening on podcast, I'm going to talk about Bama in a second. If you're watching on YouTube, have a video speaking specifically to what we think of Alabama from this game. So go check that out on the channel. Like I said, if you're on podcast, I'm going to talk about that in just a matter of moments. You did not play your best football yesterday for Tennessee. You didn't. They were not able to connect on the deep shots early. I mean, three first half turnovers. Nico goes for less than 200 yards. And guess what? It didn't matter. It didn't. Because you still won the football game by a touchdown. Like, quite frankly, like to be able to overcome not playing your best ball and beat what I believe still to be a pretty talented Alabama team. And a lot of folks are going to try to disvalidate this win for Tennessee. They say, well, Bama's mid. Bama lost to Vandy. Yeah, Bama also beat Georgia. (laughs) Kalen DeBoer also had lost like 13 times coming into that game. So you be the judge of how, how much of a test Alabama is. Tennessee getting it done in that kind of fashion, I think, deserves a ton of credit. I think Josh Heupel deserves a ton of credit. Because honestly, like as much as we... Imagine Tennessee being that team of 2022 where they score 40 points a game and they're throwing it deep and they're hitting on the deep shots. Like, this might just be who Tennessee is this year. Like, to be gritty, to run the football the way they did, to have Dylan Sampson be the dude he's been for you this year. Had another big game yesterday, over five yards a carry, two touchdowns, over 100 yards. Like, if you can be gritty like that on the ground offensively, which again, I tell you, Josh Heupel wants to be gritty. If if you were to... Give him truth serum. He would tell you he wants to run the gosh darn football. There's a reason why they align how they align with those splits to give you that box to be able to pound the rock. And then defensively, to play that way they played up front, to hold Alabama to two yards of carry on the ground. To be the more physical team, to impose their will. Like That's a winning formula. And here's the deal too, like I just mentioned, the scary thing is I think they're still not even tapping into their potential just yet. Because you saw what they could be when they got the downfield game working a little bit. Take a pause right there. Credit Josh Heupel so much for continuing to let it rip offensively. Because I think the temptation is whenever your quarterback's not having it downfield, and Josh Heupel described it post-game, he said, yeah, a little bit off at times, but he found it late. When your quarterback's off early, the temptation I would have to imagine is from a human nature standpoint is to say, okay, well, let's get away from that. It's not working. Let's pivot away. We we, we can't just keep hitting our head against the wall here. We got to stop doing that. That wasn't Josh Heupel, though. Continued to let his young quarterback take shots deep, shots deep, shots deep, and eventually, guess what? They hit at the most critical time. Downfield missile to Dante Thornton. Connection, massive. Chris Brazel dropping in a bucket. Maybe it wasn't the you know 40-yard bomb that you were expecting, but still, a touch throw, a shot downfield of some sense for the touchdown, like that was massive. And I'm not so sure now that moments like that, third Saturday in October, Game's on the line. Got to have it kind of play if you're Nico. I'm not so sure if moments like that don't kind of break the dam, if you will. The kind of, oh, okay, I, I can do this. Oh, okay, that's what it takes. That's what it feels like in a game to hit on those shots. Okay, good. Because I'll say this, y'all. I don't have any questions about can Nico Iamaliava hit the deep shot from a physical perspective. We saw him do it multiple times during spring practice. It's not a matter of is he able to do it. It's a matter of Does he have the repetitions and does he have the muscle memory to be able to make it happen consistently in a football game? Here's the thing too, like we we want Nico to be this finished product in our minds because of what he was as a recruit and because of all the physical giftings. He's still figuring this out. He's still a first year starting quarterback in the SEC. This stuff is hard. This is not, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Nico's still super talented has all the ability in the world. Josh Heupel said it after the game. He's going to be a special player, all right? So just give him some time to acclimate. Give him some time. Credit Josh Heupel, too, for being okay with winning gritty. Because I think a lot of times, and this is stereotypical of me, but I'll say it anyway, offensive head coaches, I think the the narrative around them is, well, they just are married to their numbers. They're married to their scheme, their way of doing things. 
That hasn't been Josh Heupel since he's gotten Knoxville. You know what he's married to? W's. He's married to winning. If they got to run it 60% of the time to get that done, he's cool with that. If it takes Jalen Hyatt scoring four or five touchdowns in a game, he's cool with that. Like, like that's, I think, very, very, very transparently who Josh Heupel is as a play caller philosophically. And that's who I think Josh Heupel is this year. If it takes Nico running the football, great. If it's Dylan Sampson, great. If it's deep shots downfield, great. Like, however it looks, just win. He's not married to his own philosophy offensively. He's married to getting dubs. And I think you saw that again last night. So now when you look at Tennessee, and again, hand up now, uh, Vol fans, we were wrong. Way, way off on this one, okay? We thought Bamba was going to be more explosive offensively, and uh, James Pierce in that front seven had something to say about that, all right? So we were off on that one. But I'll say this. The Vols are very much so alive when it comes to their college football playoff hopes. Think about the way that you felt after that loss on the road against Arkansas. Everything's sort of spinning out of control a little bit. You're wondering about the offense. You're wondering about who this Tennessee team actually is going to be. You're wondering about the chops for them in the postseason. But to get a win like this, to recapture momentum, what I just said a second ago, if Tennessee puts it together in the pass game, how good could they be? Because that defense now is good enough to lean on. That run game, good enough to lean on. If you add the passing element into this offense, and I don't think it's just on Nico. I think it's a collection of errors. I think it's a matter of everyone being on the same page consistently and having the whole machine work in cohesion. If you can get that done, that can be very difficult. Now, you still have George on the schedule. Dream with me here. We're not picking this game right now, but I'm just saying let's let's unpack the worst-case scenario as it pertains to that game. Let's say you drop that game to Georgia because that's the one you would assume you won't be favored in. The rest of the way now, if that's your only other loss, and again, if is a big word there, to have a resume-boosting win over Alabama, I think 10-2 and two Tennessee would have a very strong case to be in the college football playoff, especially if they're able to handle business the way, they, the way they're supposed to handle business against other competition. Now, obviously, if you beat Georgia, then we're not even talking about this anymore. We're talking about Tennessee being a college football playoff team as an 11-1 and one team. So all that's to say now, when we look at Tennessee, we got to take them seriously because of the defense, because of the run game, and because of that ain't no telling factor with Nico and what he could be if a game like this boosts his confidence and he puts it together down the field. Tennessee, man, enjoy the cigars if you're still smoking them today on Sunday. More power to you. Uh, if you are in Knoxville, clean it up today. God bless you. And Tennessee, getting it done yet again over Alabama under Josh Heupel. Balls win in the end. Make sure you're locked in. Make sure you're subscribed. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. We're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.